Hello everyone, today's video is going to be extremely exciting because today we are going to learn how to play the Danish Gambit. It is a gambit which is not so popular but it is very powerful if your opponent don't know how to react to it. And uh, after watching this video, I have basically covered each and every variation that is possibly played by a human. So it's going to be extremely fun to watch and after watching this video you are definitely going to check out this particular opening in your games and you are going to score some heavy points. So yeah, I don't want to waste any further time, so let's quickly jump into the video. So, we are playing with the white pieces and we start the game with 1 e4. Our opponent plays the standard move e5. And on the second move, we are already going to play the move d4. After d4, we are basically attacking the pawn on e5, so the main move is to capture the pawn on d4. For example, if black plays something else like knight c6, we can already play the move d5 grab more space in the center and already claim that we are better in the position. So definitely the main move is to capture the pawn and now we are going to push the pawn to c3 not going to capture the d4 pawn. After c3 our opponent captures the pawn because if you play something else like d5 for example we can already capture the pawn on d5 and after queen d5 c d4 our idea is already to play the move knight to c3 hitting the queen and we are having a lead in development which is a good idea and a good position from the white side. So the main move is to capture the pawn and now at the place of capturing the pawn with the knight which our opponent is mostly expecting we are going to play the move bishop to c4 and after c to b2 here from here the Danish gambit begins we are going to play the move bishop into b2 and after bishop into b2 this is the main position and from in this position I have covered six variation six possible moves that black can possibly play in this position. After bishop into b2, I have covered knight to f6, bishop to b4 check, d6, queen to g4, knight to c6 and d5. These are the six possible moves that I personally believe that black can play. So coming to the first move which is knight to f6 which is mostly very, uh, very common move. Knight to f6 you are simply developing the knight and also hitting the pawn on e4. We already pushed the pawn to e5 and here black plays the move knight to e4 because the knight is simply attacked so you have to move the knight. If you play the move knight g8 it's simply a bad move I can simply play the move knight f3 and now knight f6 was simply a bad move now and white is even better because of the pawn on strong pawn on the e5. So knight to e4 which is the main move and now we are already going to play the move bishop into f7 check. The king captures the bishop and now comes the move queen to d5 check simultaneously hitting the knight and in this position white is a pawn down but in the exchange black can no longer castle and you can already sense how this bishop is too powerful the e5 pawn is extremely strong followed by maybe f4 knight f3 short castle just developing the knight rook to d1 or e1 the position is already very sound for white and the position is already too good for white from the practical perspective so this is how you should play if your opponent plays the move knight to f6 so coming after bishop into b2 the second possible move that can be played by black is the bishop to b4 which is I guess the most common move because any player would like to start the game with a check. Bishop to b4 check. And now we play the move knight to d2 simply developing the knight. Black plays knight f6, the idea should develop the knight, hitting this pawn because the knight cannot capture the pawn because the knight is pinned and simultaneously black wants to short castle. So here we again push the pawn to e5 hitting the knight. Knight goes to e4 because we cannot capture because the knight is pinned by the bishop. So here already we are going again to sacrifice the bishop by playing the move bishop into f7 check. King into f7. Now comes the move queen to b3 check simultaneously hitting the bishop. And here black plays the move d5 because what else can you play? For example if king e8 I can already capture the bishop. And this position is already very sound for white after takes queen g2. The position is already good for white. The most common move that usually many players play after queen b3 is to play the move d5 because it opens up the light square bishop also it protects black from any checks. But now we are going to simply end pass in giving a check. The opponent simply plays bishop e6. We capture the bishop and now black happily captures the knight because the knight is simply double attacked. And here our opponent is expecting us to capture the knight. But we are already going to surprise our opponent by playing the move queen to f4 check. 
the queen cannot come in between because the bishop will simply capture the queen. So the king goes back and now we simply capture the c7 pawn instead, hitting the queen and the knight. Our opponent plays the move queen e8, threatening some tactical ideas maybe on the e-file. And here our opponent again is thinking that we will capture either of the knight maybe. But again we are going to surprise our opponent by playing the move queen to e5, threatening mate in 1. So you must protect it with the queen and now we simply capture the knight, make a queen. We have a trade. Black is forced to trade off the queen and after trading off the queen you can simply count the material. We are simply 8 points ahead and it's completely winning the game. So this is how you should play if your opponent plays the move king into f7. Now let's try to discuss what happens if black simply moves the king. After king f8 you can simply play the move bishop to a3 which is very critical move you must play in this position because black is already preparing to capture the knight so you must play bishop a3. The idea here is if knight into knight you can simply capture the bishop with a check and after king into simply queen into d2 you are a pawn down but again as I said the king can no longer castle and uh, the position is very sound for both the sides. So yeah and if black captures the bishop, you can already capture the knight in this position and after queen bishop b4 check, king f1 you must play and after king e2, queen check, capture the bishop, the position is already still very sound because of the strong pawn on e5. So this is how you can play if your opponent captures the bishop, uh, bishop on, if your opponent does not capture the bishop and plays the move king f8. So this is how you should play if your opponent plays the move bishop to b4 check. So now let's try to discuss what happens if your opponent plays the move d6. Trying to first stop this pawn push and now the idea could be to develop the bishop. You develop the bishop, opponent plays the move bishop to g4 maybe. And now you can already sacrifice the bishop. King into, knight check. You cannot capture the knight because the queen is hanging up. You must move the king and I can sim simply capture the bishop. And if you count the material, I'm a pawn down, but in the exchange, the black king can no longer castle, white bishop is extremely strong, you can simply castle on the next move, simply strike in the center and simply win the game. So this is how you should play if your opponent plays the move bishop to g4, if bishop to e6, you can simply trade off the bishop, play queen to b3, simply hitting both the pawns. So black must play the move queen c8 in order to protect the both the pawns which is the most natural move, but now comes the move knight to g5. Double pressure on the pawn on e6. And here, what can black even do? Like if e5, I can simply play the move queen f7 check followed by knight e6 and black is forced to give up the queen and eventually we will win the game. So yeah, so this is what happens. So if black plays something like king to e7 defending the pawn, you can already sacrifice the knight and after queen takes queen into b7, you can already sense the rook is lost and we are going to win the game. So yeah, this is what happens if your opponent plays the move bishop to e6, bishop to e6 or bishop to g4 after d6. So yeah, this is what happens if your opponent plays the move d6 So now let's try to discuss what happens if your opponent plays the move queen to g5. Developing the queen and also putting some pressure on the pawn on g2, expecting us to play the move g3, which is a bad move. But we are going to surprise our opponent by already by playing the move knight f3, developing the knight and also hitting the queen. Queen captures the pawn, rook g1, Queen is 3 and already here we are going to play a strong move. Can you guess it? Bishop into f7, boom. The king cannot capture the bishop because after knight g5 check, black will lose the queen. So the king has to move and now comes the move, rook into g7, extremely strong move. The idea is to simply move the rook now, hitting the queen, simultaneously hitting the rook. So black has to capture the rook and now we can simply capture the bishop. And now on the next move, it's lost for black after we capture the knight, after we capture the rook. For example, like the best try for black is to play the move queen g4, hitting the bishop and the pawn, but we can simply capture the rook, queen into pawn, queen e2, and the possession is simply lost because we are simply a piece up. So yeah, this is how you should play if your opponent plays the move queen to g5. So now let's talk about what, uh, how to play if your opponent plays the move knight to c6 developing the knight and i think practically speaking i think it is the best move because after knight c6 we play the move knight f3 bishop to b4 check and now 
If you try to play something like knight d2, knight f6, and try to sacrifice the bishop, thinking that after queen b3 we are going to win the bishop, it is not possible because after moving the king, the bishop is simply defended by the knight. So this is the advantage of developing the knight to c6. That is the reason after bishop to b4 check, we, we are going to play the move knight to c3. And after knight f6, we simply get short castle. Short castle, and now we simply play the move knight to d5, advancing our pieces. After knight d5, we are already hitting the bishop as well as the knight, which is a very strong move. If you try to capture the pawn, I'm already having a strong move bishop d3, simply putting some huge amount of pressure on the king side, and it is already very dangerous for black. Like if you play the move knight d6, already queen c2 is dangerous, and what can you play in this position? f h6, already knight into b4, knight into b4, queen c3, hitting the knight as well as threatening mate in one. That is the way, that is the reason it is completely lost for black. So this is what happens if your opponent captures the pawn. So black will most likely capture that knight. And now we can simply capture the knight with the pawn hitting the bishop, hit, hitting the knight. The knight goes back. We already play the move queen d4, threatening mate in one. If black plays f6 trying to prevent mate in one, we can simply push the pawn, give a check and also capture the knight. If opponent plays knight f5, which is most practical move, already queen g4. And after hitting the knight, black plays the d6 in order to protect the knight. We already play bishop d3. You cannot move the knight because it's mate in one. Second, we are hitting the knight two times now. And third, the bishop is also hanging on b4. So it's completely lost for black. So this is what happens if black plays the move knight to c6. And now let's try to discuss what happens if at the place of knight c6, black goes for playing the move d5, which is the final move. After d5, we are simply going to capture the pawn. And the idea of d5, now black will try to play the move c6. The idea here is if white moves the bishop, black would be happy to trade off the queens and it, uh, black is pretty happy. But after c6, we are already going to sacrifice the bishop. You cannot capture the bishop because the queen is simply hanging up. After king e7, bishop a3 check. And now you have to capture the bishop and you lose the queen eventually the game. So this is what happens if you play the move c6. If you play the move knight to f6, which is the best move, the point is, we cannot capture the pawn in this position because after king into, queen into, bishop to b4 check, and eventually black will win back the queen. So basically, then bishop into f7 is not really working up. So after knight f6, we are going to play the move knight to c3. And after knight takes, knight takes c6 now, still we have a very strong move, knight to f6 check. Very strong move, you cannot capture the knight with the queen because I will simply capture the queen. So after pawn takes, I will not wait off the queen, take with the pawn, giving a check, also picking up the rook and eventually winning the game. So this is what happens if the opponent plays the move d5 in this position. So yeah, this is how you should play the Danish Gambit. This was the complete crash course of Danish Gambit. I have covered six variations in this position. Knight f6, bishop to b4, d6, knight c6, queen g4, a queen g5 and at last d5. So yeah, I hope that this video might have helped you to improve your chess knowledge and definitely you are pretty much interested to try out this particular opening now in your chess game. So I don't want to waste any further time. I'm going to let you play your games and try to score some heavy good points. So yeah, if you like the video, then make sure to at least like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. Because I'm going to come up with these interesting videos like this. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.